All right, how's it going guys and welcome aboard the next video. Now today I got a little something special for you. Today I'm going to be visiting somebody who is actually there at the Comic Con in Bell County. And today we're going to visit this guy who made the props that I got off of. Now we're going to go ahead and go see what he's all about and we're going to go ahead and see how he does what he does. Now of course the props that he gave me you can see right here I'm going to be showcasing them and I'm going to be getting some information from him on what he does, what he's all about, how he does what he does and if you guys are interested how you can contact him. Now I'm about to head over there here in a little bit so the next time you will see me he will be in the camera with me. Mario! Here we go! <laughs> Welcome back guys, so we're here at uh... Charlie Ray. Charlie Ray. All right, so we're here at his place, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be checking out some of the things that he's doing. So uh, you actually sent me some like uh, pictures of what you were working on, Absolutely. which is uh, Chewbacca's crossbow. Right, the, the, the Chewbacca bowcaster. Uh, right. uh, making it for a friend of mine. Uh, it's my first from scratch build, but it's really come out great. Yeah, it's looking really good too. I mean, uh, when you sent me the pictures, you were showing me like what you were doing throughout the week with it. Right, the process. Right, it looked really awesome. Right. And uh, he's going to actually take us through the process here later on, but we're going to talk a little bit more about what it is that you do and what it is that you're trying to do for your business as far as it goes. I, basically, I'm just trying to uh, help us working class people afford good quality, almost screen accurate props that don't cost you 12, 1500 bucks on Etsy or anywhere else like right. that. Right. Which is ridiculous a lot of times because you'll see props that look almost exactly like it. But they're like eighteen, two thousand dollars. Right. Absolutely. It, it 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 takes the the fun out of cosplay for folks like us, right. you know. Because not everybody can afford that kind of stuff. So. Right. I and mean, not everybody has a, a certain skill set where they can do this kind of stuff on their own. And you know, I mean, but I, I I love those guys that do do their best with the duct tape and the foam and, and you know, I mean, it's amazing what people can do. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I gotta say, like the props, you were like the only one I saw there that was doing these kind of props. Right. You were the only one. Right, custom. And, yeah, custom props, which I thought was incredible. Because when I first saw it, I was like, oh, I want one, but I'm not sure. So, you know, went around, came back later on, I was like, I really want one of those. <laughs> what, what was the price point you were thinking they would be? I was thinking that they were gonna be like 80 to $100. Yeah. That's what I thought. Right because uh, they were Nerf guns at one point, it looked like, right. and they were just modded to be costly. Yes. So I figured it was gonna be like 100, maybe $120, and the pistol maybe 80 bucks. Right. But it ended up not being worth that much. Right. And the well, thing is- Well, it didn't cost that right. much. Right, and if, if the, uh, the pistol, because it looked like something out of Fallout 4. Right. And that pistol was like, that could have been worth a lot of money if it, if it was sold as a prop that was from the Fallout. It, it, and I'm not a big gamer, I just, me, it's just my head, my mind, I get something and I, I see, well, this could be this, you know, or, or this would look cool like this. And I thought that was a really cool concept too because, I mean, you can, you can literally, you could make things that looks like a lot of stuff from, from video games, whether you realize it or not, you can do that, you're able to do it. Like, well, what's this pistol right here you got? This one. This was just a uh, $13 Batman orange and white Walmart uh, grappling gun. And uh, my plan was to eventually have a, have a good Batman costume and uh, I wanted the grappling gun to go with it. And so I, this was one of my first paint jobs to try to make it look as real and metallic as possible aside from the orange and white. Yeah, that is fantastic. And you could, you could literally, so you could take people's requests and you could probably do something with it? Absolutely. Right. Or, or, and also from scratch, like the, the Chewbacca Bowcaster. Right, which we're going to showcase as well. And uh, is that 
in MP5? It is. It, uh, one of my costumes that I do is a uh, Joker. Oh, okay. Heath Ledger Joker, and so this is his MP5 from when he was on the uh, on the slaughterhouse truck or the laughter truck. <laughs> Still works, but it, it looks fairly authentic. Yeah, it does. Some friends of mine up at the Bell County Film Society, they were talking to me about one, who I met at Comic Con, talking about wanting me to make a time machine for them. And I, I'm pretty good, but that just seemed like a, it was going to cost them a lot of money, so I came up with the idea for a portal gun. Uh, that way, you can, no matter where you are, you can just open up your portal and jump through time, and parts like a VCR head with some bits of electronics epoxy and uh, there you go I'm still working on the, uh, the control box that has all the controls to set date and time I'm wanting to do it with an old rotary phone where you push a button to set the date and yeah and, yeah I remember people hated other people with zeros and <laughs> <laughs> It would take forever, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> or the party line. Oh god, those were cool. <laughs> so the pistol, like I said, like I'll show you guys here, uh, the pistol looked a lot like something out of Fallout 4 and it was absolutely amazing. And this is what it started as apparently. Like, that is incredible. How uh, they went from that. The Nerf Maverick Rev 6 is what it started out as in yeah. life as. A donation from my neighbors across the street. Thank you guys. And that's absolutely incredible how it came from this and then ended up what we have now. And that is just absolutely amazing. And I've started implementing Bondo in all of my products. So I try to get rid of screw holes and things like that. Well, there you go. Yeah. Give it more an authentic look. Right, exactly. So uh, for I've those that don't know what Bondo is, it's basically a big ass band aid for your car. Yes. <laughs> and then you only have about 20 minutes or 20 seconds to put it on. Yeah. <laughs> I've used that before. <laughs> Yeah, well, man, yeah, it fast. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I guess what we're going to talk about next is uh, your contact, how people can contact you, or do certain work, all sorts, you know, that kind of stuff for business purposes, how they can contact you to build things, uh, price ranges, you know, talk about that. Well, the builds are all based on how specific they want. Again, the complexity of the device, you know, a Jawa rifle, you know, those don't look too hard to build. Something like that would probably run you about 200 but Again, how accurate you want it and how picky you were about it. Um, I, uh, again, like my Bowcaster, for instance, it's 350 is what I chose for this. And it, yeah. and it was a from scratch from a chunk of wood that I glued together to make it thicker and then Spent all I don't know thirty hours sanding to get the, the bevel on it that it needs. Did you say earlier that those were real scopes on them? Yes, they were real scopes. Real scopes. So let's go ahead and talk about the bow. This is the Chewbacca bowcaster that we were talking about that I'm building for a friend. I'd say that is really close to what the Chewbacca's um, bowcaster looks like. And what we're going to be doing here in a minute is finishing up the weathering because I just attached the scopes on last night. And so I want to add some weathering to give it some age like the rest of the gun so that it, it will match. Well, basically, I'm just adding some rust features. So I like to use uh, my light brown, uh, the acrylic artist paint, and the dark brown, also known as burn on if you're an artist. Uh, go ahead and talk us through the process, what it was. Uh putting together that program? Uh, first, a lot of looking on the internet, different pictures, you know, and, and there's really not a whole bunch of really good pictures of the actual bowcaster that Chewbacca uses. I don't right. know if it's because all the fur is always covering up, but, uh, but lots of research, lots of pictures um, uh, downloading. Um, then I, I started off with two three quarter inch pieces of, uh, of pine which I glued together, clamped together, let sit overnight. Uh, while it was drying, I covered one side with blue masking tape to make it easier to see the lines because I have I was going to have to sketch it by hand from the pictures that I was looking at on the internet on my phone to scale for a Chewbacca size, so a little bigger than for me. And so that's kind of what I was going for. And, and so once I got it all drawn out, uh, I got the trusty jigsaw, went through about six blades, cutting through that three quarter inch, well, an inch and a half from Alpine. Um, got it finished, uh, a whole bunch of sanding to get the contours just right on the stock, because it's got a round uh, bevel to it, radius, and lots of sanding in the, uh, the portion of the four stock where it's hollow, 
because the jigsaw did not do a very good job cutting that out. But uh, my sander did a great job fixing that. Um, so after that, then it was time to start applying the receiver part, which is the top part of the gun that the barrel extends out of. That's what I call it anyway, the receiver. I think that's what it's called on regular firearms, so the receiver there, um, uh, or chamber, whatever. Well, there's the upper receiver and lower receiver, but it also depends on which firearm you're talking about. Okay, all right. Well, the part where they're getting... It doesn't the, matter. The, the barrel. I'm not a professional either. either. I, I don't I'm know everything. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> But so once I, because I had the, I had parts already piled together after I spoke with Matt and he knew that that's what he wanted me to do. I had this bucket and I just everything I found that I thought I could use buttons, knobs, whatever, everything I found that I could use for this bowcaster, I just started filling it up. So I had parts, the part that I wanted to use to make the receiver out of, which was actually the the front of an old uh, digital TV receiver converter box. You know, like that big, just perfect size, had a nice shape to it. So that was that part. And after I attached it, then I started doing all my bondo work, filling in any pits and the sanding and to make that look like one solid piece. Covered up all my seams on it, any holes that I miscalculated drilling or whatever. Or put a couple layers of bondo on it. Sanded that some more. Primer. Started building it with the greed leaves and the knobs on the side, the control knobs, the volume knobs, whatever they are. Uh, attached the bow, uh, painted it, then did a full weathering on up to that point. And then I, waiting on parts to come in for the scopes and the uh, polarizers, the balls at the ends of the bow. And once they arrived, then I started fabricating how am I going to do this to get the three scopes on one gun? It was a challenge, but it was fun. I like trying to figure out how to do things and it should work. Oh, it did work, but it should work. Yay, it worked! <laughs> uh, and then once that was done, which we did today, I weathered and uh, applied my final coat. Then I, uh, I, I made the strap while I was waiting for you today. Uh, my daughter, thank you Ashley, went out and picked that up for her day and uh, got it made and weathered it too, which you saw. And uh, now we're just waiting on my buddy Matt, who I lovingly call Chewbacca, <laughs> to uh, show up, come and pick it up. Well, was he actually dressed as Chewbacca? Eddie? Yes, yes, he was. That was him. Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> could send you a picture to, to, to go along with this if you'd like. I actually got a picture up. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's him. It was really tall. I totally saw him there. Uh, my son was too afraid to approach him. <laughs> he would have, we wouldn't have anything to do with him. He's going to be here in about 10, 15 minutes. So you made this for, for Matt, and he's going to be surprised when he shows up. Today, he's, he's seen it up to a certain stage, and I guess you're going to show that picture now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which stage was it? It was uh, where everything was on it except for the scopes and what I was showing you where the cover I made that covers up the front of the bow to hide okay. my engineering. All right, so that's where he saw it. That was the last he saw. He hasn't seen okay. it with the, with the polarizers or the, the scopes or the, the, the sling or yeah. So it's he saw about 75%. Or 25% of it. Well, you saw it at about 75%. All right. So uh, we're, he's going to show it to him when he gets here. I'm going to get. I'm going to record his reaction. I can't wait to <laughs> see what happens. You ever see Chewbacca faint? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to continue that once he gets here. Right. Too big a deal. <laughs> Five minutes later. In the trunk of the car. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid if I. You know, there was Let me just stay stuck to the blanket. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Just feel free to reach in and grab. <laughs> oh man! Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> oh, this is great. I love it. Oh, you went and you you did go ahead and put the the front D ring on. Yeah, I too. Had to put the strap on it for you too. Oh, that looks awesome. This is awesome.
I'm, I'm so happy with the way it came out. And, and you're right, the the scopes, the, the using these scopes made it look so much better. Well, you, you can even look through them. I mean, it, it'll line right up on them. Oh, that's awesome. That is so cool. And I got the caps for it too, they're over here. That is so awesome. I love it. I love it. It is great. Cool, Thank you man. so much. You man. bet, dude. You bet. Oh. I, like I said, I can't wait to I can't wait to get in costume and and, and walk around with it because it's gonna make it, it'll add so much, you know, having this on there. So a lot of things happened before I left. I didn't quite get to catch on camera when I said goodbye, but there was a lot of things I caught on camera there, and I'm gonna have to do a second video because a lot of the things that Matt talked about, I really need to do a separate video on. So I'm going to actually show some pictures of some of his other work that he did that he ended up selling and even um, I think one, he, uh, somebody won in a raffle when uh, Comic Con was going out in Bell County. So um, as you can see in a lot of these pictures, he actually is so good, oh my god, a lot of these are really amazing. Uh, one actually looks like the gun from Gears of War with the chainsaw on the end. And that one, uh, I guarantee you, if I was there when he still had that, I would have bought that thing. Like, that is just so awesome. Now, we'll leave his contact information right here on the screen. And it will also be in the description down below if you want to contact him and try and find out if he can make something that you really want, something that you really need in your cosplay. Now, for anybody else out there who is into cosplay and to any of these kind of things in our local area of Central Texas, let me know. I may actually do a video with you if you wish. It's all up to you. You can reach out and contact me at this page on YouTube, Nick the Sailor Retro Gaming. Right now, that's the best means that I have of being contacted. And that's how uh, he contacted me. Uh, some people have found me through Facebook, through my personal Facebook. I'm very careful with what I do when it comes to that. But YouTube would be one way to contact me directly. And I will. Uh, reply very very quickly so I hope you guys like that video don't forget to leave a comment down below let me know what you think now if you like this video go ahead and click that like button down below if you haven't done it already go ahead and subscribe and as always remember 22 and stay classy bros